to Koskinen Stadium, the home of the Duke Blue Devils here in Durham, North Carolina, where the fifth-ranked Blue Devils take on an upstart top 20 team. Outdone on the faceoff. Something that could be an X factor for yeah, Boston today. Terriers coach, when we talked to him this week, Coach Pauly said he really wanted to open up and, and really make sure they're maximizing it. It's possible, but as we talked about before the game here off camera, David already, it's going to impact the game in so many different levels. And a quick shot. Yep. Barnes and with the save. Beautiful Plays play. Kick us well, off. The first one, the save from Barnes, and then who else on the other end? But and then Barnes is right, right, right around 58%. So you have two... I would say premier goalies playing at the top of their game right now. And, um, but uh, the space in front of the goal is going to, we're going to have assignments where defenders are going to be have, have, having to yeah, go it through. He gets a little guys. bit of a step right here in these muddy conditions. You can see that right now. And that's what we're, that's going to be the X factor. Not turning the ball over. They will stay with possession. 11 minutes left to go. The Terriers look to set up once again. Score! Boston University Terriers, Jimmy Core, the sophomore, gets his name in the score sheet. In as he comes to goal line extended, he sees a little bit of the overcommitment there, and he pulls out. Pulls Defense. That's the second goal of the season for Core, as it's a self control for Naso. Duke successful on the clear. And they'll answer back. Strike offense for the Duke Blue Devils as they make their way past the third. Uh, the assister on this on this goal, O'Neill takes it in. You're not going to stop him with your body, and he is also a sharp shooter. In the game clock of the first quarter, where the Terriers lead two to one over the fifth-ranked Blue Devils. Yeah. Balsamo, way over as we continue to positions here. O'Neill on the far side. O'Neal ball in his stick. Looking to string three passes together. Scooped up by a blue. The ball falls at his feet, and it doesn't take long for him to launch it. As that he Box player, always in the right place at the right time. Quick, quick to get to the ball, quick to release it. This, you know, the, all that matters is the ball crosses the goal line. And a lot of times it's not pretty. It doesn't matter how it happens. In that case, Dyson was in the right place at the right time. Picked up a nice rebound. And... You know, again, Boston University answers right back. Back-to-back -back scores for the here on the road at Koskinen Stadium. The Boston Terriers proving they have what it takes to play with the best of the it's an absolute downpour and a similar type day to what we saw Duke have to face when they took on Penn earlier this season. Unfortunately, that you know, that game was for the Devils. Um, you know, they were coming back now with the four. They're bringing four teams. Um, to that, so that'll um, have some impact on on uh, the end of season uh, determinations from bracket standpoint and things of that nature. Beautiful, the freshman Ben Johnston finds the equalizer. As you take another look ben, here, yeah, Ben comes around on a on a basically a swing up. And yeah, to that point, you know better than just about anyone, David. But it seems like it would be really hard to kind of get that pivot foot down, to have those quick bursts of movements that attackmen are looking for when you're playing on such a slippery surface. Well, remember, when you're playing lacrosse out, this is a good opportunity to see what I was just talking about before. If you keep a, a space and distance, how much room do you have to actually get good passes to the right people at the right time? Nice feed in and a quick Skandinowski's Blue Devils as they will take their first lead of the contest with just under 10 minutes. Skip right down from top over down to Dyson. And that was a skip, you know, around, right? And obviously they're man down in that situation too. As an insider, that's a really smart uh, backup right there they had by, uh, by Ben Johnson. Duke with another possession and another score. Long range as this Duke lead will increase to two. Yeah, it's going to really do sort of a, a, an alley dodge to a degree and then turn that into a, a sidewinded, you know, sort of a quarter shot. It's going to put it right over the, over the shoulder skip pass, um, which I think would have led to a, 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 another good dodge, but um, wasn't able to get it through. Credit to the Terriers. Same thing right there. That's a great pass. Not much is because there, it's almost impossible to slide fast enough in the mud in order to get that. He continues to draw it lower and lower as the Terriers look to come back once again here in Costas. And then be able to either continue to find a shot like this. This is Perfetto. And you see the slipping and the sliding. 
Don't know if that was necessarily a foul of any sort. I didn't really see that. The long stick of Will Frasoli tripped up Perfetto. I did, I did think I saw some contact with the leg. It was hard to tell if it was warranting a trip or not. Nevertheless, that's the call, and there's the score. Draws things even once again as the Terriers and Blue Devils struck low and stayed low. Jameson probably might be able to have that on a normal day. That would actually... D'Alto now just four goals away from becoming the program. Because they're reading him. And what you really want to do is exactly make a move and actually draw people. Force them, force them to move in order to create some kind of uh, opportunity, a shot. Advantages in this game coming into it, and it's stayed true throughout the contest, has been on the faceoff as they win another one to open up yep. the second half. And Nace is on. And you see, you know, he stays in as an offensive threat. And, you know, rather than a Fogo, so they kept, he missed fall ball this year, and they worked on his offense. He puts it right no, there, no and it hits low, stays low, offside on Barnes, and beautiful shot, beautiful. The ball out, so, you know, great that they got it, but might want to hold on to that, get the right people on the field, and do it in a way that's, uh, you know, going to yield the best results. Terriers working it around. They find their Vince D'Alto with another for the Boston Terriers. We're back evened up. Beautiful ball movement here. One, two, three, then a skip pass. And you're going to see a lot of that because the, when you're doing that backside skip pass and then this, you have for Duke to work with on the man up. So a little bit of a clarification there on the call. And then it also goes against DeGoler instead of Huntley. There's a skip down. Nice find and a score. You see, it's just very hard for them to adjust. So again, it wasn't to the adjacent side. Right on the doorstep. There's the skip. Down to J down to Dyson. And you're one-on-one -on -one with Dyson. A number of saves against him today. Um, that, that one was as he went towards the goal line extended and was being pushed, pushed behind, but he took the shot anyway. So, you know, again, that's gonna happen. Okay, now you're gonna look for a little bit of a what we call a slow break. Going quickly are the Blue Devils, and on. Brennan O'Neill, you can't leave him alone. Number 34 in white. Uh, and the Devils are doing a pretty good job adjusting to that high level of pressure in the middle third of the field. A little bit impatient and to make them you know, throw passes in the center where it's all clogged up. Sloat with the shot. And then he has a cannon. He does. You can't lose possessions because you don't have a backup. Because you, know, you, know, you don't know when you're going to get the ball next. Not a lot of time to work with on the shot clock for Duke. It's been a long possession. Oh, my. That's an ESPN highlight reel there, Woo! right there. That was an incredible shot. And again, complicated in a rainy day to get that freedom from your defender by just using the mud. Yeah. You know, just 98 miles an hour. You know, in the, <laughs> you know. Duke, yeah. who can stretch the field? Well, and that's why before, like, when I was watching Zawada, you know, he was behind and feeding and no one was covering him. And I, I, I looked in, looking at it saying, that, you know, the, the better play. That was great. D'Alto looking for his fourth. Curling. You know, right now, he's just, he's just looking to get some kind of advantage through a slip. Nice pass. The feed into the crease. Up. And that's not where you want Perfetto if you're Duke. To close him down exclusively in this mud right on the doorstep. The offensive players are even trying, slipping as they're making their dodges right now. Yeah, things are getting worse, not better, on the field here in Durham, especially as this game continues. This Duke defense has really ramped up the intensity and physicality, in my opinion, in this second half. Well, yeah, and they're 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 trying to they're trying to draw a foul. They're trying to work any kind of any kind of opening there. They did get the score, and that was a great possession. I don't know how he McGuire lost him. And, he, you know, he's going to look at it and say, just that one opening, that one on. This time he'll work his way into the front of the crease as Duke looks to change things up. O'Neal on the swim. Some room to work for O'Neal. A little bit of a win. We're looking at loggerheads back and forth with UPenn. It was in the rain, and we just ran out of time. It came up with came up with some goal, you know, two, uh, not enough scoring opportunities. And right now, we got a tie game because simple stuff and making a difference. An equalizer for BU. They come Look, right communication, in. and finally, you know, just came, you have to have body pressure and hand pressure on the hands of the shooters when you're coming around there and behind. So it's playing a zone right now up top and they're just trying to really clog up that center at, and make Duke make perfect passes to open open shooters. O'Neal finds John. I'm gonna try to see that skip pass again because that's usually how you break a zone. 
Under a minute left to go in quarter number three. Duke once again will follow it out. They've got... Loses steam. They're going to move that ball. Try to... On the roll, the bounce shot. No good. Barnes in position. Don't know if he affected. Wide open. There was Dyson got wide open there on the doorstep. Four seconds left. And this becomes three, two, one. Yeah, because you know. 44 shots in the day for the Blue Devils. 21 of them on goal. Just 29 for Boston. And there's 45. That one whizzes wide. Possession stage with the Devils. O'Neal working the near side. What a move! And the score, Brendan O'Neal! He's like that! And a huge score for Duke! The advantage. So using Mother Nature and what the, she's given us today in order to uh, yield the goal. And I think that's a. He'll pass it off. So they're going to work behind Jamison. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Six minutes, 15 left in this matchup. And that one squeezed through. Answer shot for shot we go in Durham. Duke the first, Boston the second. 10-10 our score line. We've got a heater here in Durham. See what Up kind of, Blue Devil. got the bet Tyler Carpenter here, one of the best point leaders on that. And really great save by Barnes. Vender before it headed out of play, or might have hit it off his own terrier. Nevertheless, five seconds to work with on the shot clock. Whoa. Looking to make something out of nothing. Desperation heave. Scooped up by the blue. Get as much time under my belt, under their belts. To get a good shot, get, score, and then force Duke. Jameson force force, got a piece force of it. Duke to have a, uh, um, have to beat Naso. So that's how I'm, I'm looking at it. They're probably also, there haven't been really many timeouts um, for strategy, so. Shot, score! Back out ahead, goal the Blue Devils! A snipe from the freshman! A little bit of a, of a pick up top, all of a sudden, skip the pass, and there we go. And they're man, they're man, playing man to man, short stick on short stick. They're going back to McGuire. Feed inside, Jameson gets a piece of it, a lot of contact, no whistle comes up. Incredible game. It's Koskinen crowd that stuck it out through the weather. They yeah, get they go home happy. Mother Nature. This is how these 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 games are very unpredictable when you're in a when you're in a you know a huge uh, rainstorm like this. And for Duke, they're able to pick up another ranked win, avoid that in order to 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 keep going and with momentum. For David Keefe and our entire crew, I'm Connor Young saying so long from Durham, North Carolina, where the final score is 11 to 10. Duke.